now next topic is generation of am so to generate amplitude modulated signal we have two methods first is called square law modulator and second one is called switching modulator in both the modulator we use the nonlinear characteristics of the device first we uh, use the nonlinear characteristics of any device like transistor and diode and in second case we use the switching characteristics of diode okay so uh, till now we have seen that how we write the expression of amplitude modulated signal what are the power and bandwidth requirement what are the time and frequency domain representation of am uh, in case of single tone and multi tone in all the way we have seen that so now next is your square law modulator so how do we generate this am signal square law modulator the modulator term is used when we generate the signal so that's why uh, it is the modulator because in the modulation we uh, modulate the carrier signal by message signal so this is uh, term used here modulator in the transmitter side so the block diagram of this square law modulator is first of all we will have two signals like i said in starting of analog communication uh, in throughout the analog communication we will have two signals first one is message signal and second one is carrier signal so we have message signal and carrier signal as input so this is our message signal m of t and this is our carrier signal ac cos omega ct and we are adding these two signals message signal and carrier signals and then giving it to the input of non linear device and the output of non linear device is input to the system or in the filter known as bandpass filter and the output of bandpass filter is am signal and it is given by s of t so we have message signal we have carrier signal the addition of message and carrier is input to the nonlinear device let us represent it by vit input to the nonlinear device and output of nonlinear device is v not t and which is input to the bandpass filter and what should be the characteristics of this bandpass filter we will see okay because after modulation we will have a modulated signal and which is a bandpass signal that's why we use bandpass filter in the transmitter side so always remember that in the modulator side the filter which is used is bandpass filter because our message signal is a modulated signal which is also known as bandpass signal so what is the characteristics of this nonlinear device so the characteristics of this nonlinear device which is nothing but the relation between the output and input of this nonlinear device so the relationship between output and input characteristics of nonlinear device is given by v not t is equal to a1 vit plus a2 vi square t plus a3 vi cube t and so on this is the general expression for transfer characteristics of nonlinear device because they, this equation gives the relationship between output and input so we have the relation between input and output right so this is known as general characteristics of nonlinear device but as its name suggests that square law modulator we will only consider up to the square term we will 
also assume that the input signal which is to the nonlinear device is having a very small amplitude. So, if it is very small then square of it is also very small and cube of that small value is very very small that is why this higher term can be ignored. So, in nonlinear device we will consider only two terms first and second we cannot ignore this term because it maintains the nonlinear characteristics of this device. If we ignore this term also because of input is very less if the input is very less we can also ignore this term and but if we ignore this term this will be the linear characteristics, but we have to use the nonlinear device. So, nonlinear device can be maintained when we consider at least up to the second term. We can also consider third term, we can also consider fourth term, but for this point of discussion we will consider only the characteristics up to the second term. Now, the output of this nonlinear device is input to this bandpass filter. So, the characteristics of band pass filter in will be in such a way that the resultant signal should be an AM signal. AM signal it means that it should have two side bands and carrier. So, we have to use the filter in such a way that we will uh, get the two side bands and carrier at the output. So, for that we have to uh, we should know that what are the frequency component is input to the band pass filter because there are there may be a number of frequencies which is input to the bandpass filter and the filter will pass a certain frequency which comes into the range of this bandpass filter so that the output is AM signal. So, first of all we should know that what are the frequency component is present which is input to the bandpass filter. So, we have message signal and carrier signal addition of this is input to the nonlinear device we have the characteristics between output and input and we will get the output signal ok. So, let us write the equation of input V i t first which is m t plus a c cos omega c t. Now, this input this is the input to the nonlinear device and according to the characteristics of nonlinear device we get V naught t is equal to A 1 V i t plus A 2 V i square t. So, we will substitute the value of V i in this equation we get A 1 m t plus A c cos omega c t and A 2 m t plus A c cos omega c t whole square. So, if we expand this equation we get A 1 m t and A 1 A c cos omega c t plus A 2 m square t plus A 2 A c square cos square omega c t and 2 A 2 m t A c cos omega c t. This is nothing but A plus B whole square A square which is m square t multiplied with A 2 B square that is A c square cos square omega c t and multiplied with A 2 and 2 A b that is 2 m t A c cos omega c t 2 m t A c cos omega c t multiplied with A 2. So, this is the expansion. Now, we can also expand this cos square theta, cos square theta is given by we can write this cos square theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2. So, in this way we get A 1 m t plus A 1 A c cos omega c t and A 2 m square t plus A 2 A c square 1 plus cos 2 omega c t divide by 2 plus 2 a 2 m t a c cos omega c t. Now, if you multiply this term we get a 1 m t plus a 1 a c cos omega c t plus a 2 m square t plus a 2 a c square by 2 
प्लस ए टू ए सी स्क्वायर कॉस टू ओमेगा सी टी बाय टू प्लस टू ए टू एम टी ए सी कॉस ओमेगा सी टी सो दीज आर द टर्म विच इज इनपुट टू द बैंड पास फिल्टर v0 t is nothing but input to the band pass filter so in this way we can say that at the input of this band pass filter there are number of frequency component but at the output of this band pass filter we required only two side band and the carrier term which is fc so first of all we should know what are the frequency component in this particular term so there are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 term there are total of 6 term and each term is having frequency component like this is a message signal so message signal will have frequency fm this is only a cosine term so this is this will have the frequency fc this is m square t so this is m square t so this is having the frequency component 2 fm because the message signal mt is having frequency fm then m square t will have 2 fm because this is nothing but the multiplication in time domain if the signal is multiplying in time domain then it gets convolved in frequency domain and if you are convolving two signals in frequency domain then the resultant signal will have the maximum frequency which is equal to addition of maximum frequency of individual term so if you are convolving m of t multiplied with m of t and its fourier transform is m of f convolved with m of f then this m of f is having frequency fm this m of f is having frequency fm so the resultant signal will have the frequency addition of this two frequency which is 2 fm so the m square t term will have maximum frequency which is 2 fm now this fourth term a2 ac square by 2 so this is a2 ac square by 2 that is a constant term a2 is also constant ac constant 2 is constant so this is the constant term and the fourier transform of any constant signal or the constant value is delta f and delta f is nothing but the component having uh, impulse at f equal to 0 so we know that the fourier transform of one is delta f so if you multiply any constant you will get the impulse of that strength at f equal to 0 so this is also a impulse at f equal to 0 and this is co cosine term which is having only 2 fc term that is frequency carrier frequency at 2 fc and this is mt into cos omega ct that is our message signal multiplying with any cosine signal that gives uh, two side bands right uh, the spectrum of this message signal will be shifted to fc now if we draw this particular term uh, spectrum of this particular term we can uh, uh, easily observe what are the uh, two side bands and carrier and other frequency term so for your transform of mt suppose we have message signal like this any random message signal and we are assuming the fourier transform of this message signal as triangular wave form which is extended up to fm okay and i am drawing the positive part of this spectrum starting from zero positive part only okay now the first term a1 mt the fourier transform of mt is m of f so this is our m of f this is m of f i am drawing only from zero so we get this is this is our first term spectrum of first term we are not concerned about its amplitude so that's why i'm not writing the amplitude here the second term is a1 ac cos omega ct 
So the Fourier transform of cosine is impulse, impulse at plus minus fc, whatever will be the frequency of cosine, we get impulse at that particular frequency. So because the cosine is having frequency fc, we will get impulse at fc. So we get impulse at fc somewhere here. This is our second term. Now the third term, third term is a2 m square t. So mt is mt is extended to fm. So m square t will be extended to from here m square t will be extended to sum of these two frequency component that is fm plus fm which is 2 fm. So sum of the frequency component of mt, so m square t will be extended up to 2 fm like this. This is extended up to 2 fm and this is fm. So it is third component. Now fourth, fourth term a2 ac square by 2 which is a constant and the constant will have impulse at f equal to 0. So we have impulse at f equal to 0 here. This is fourth term. Now fifth term, fifth term is a2 ac square by 2 which is a constant, this is a cosine signal and cosine signal is having frequency 2 fc, so we get impulse at 2 fc. So if it is fc, then we get impulse somewhere here at 2 fc. This is our fifth term. And the last term is mt, the Fourier transform of mt is m of f. It is multiplying, this mt is multiplying with cos omega ct. So this spectrum will shift to plus fc and minus fc because of modulation property of Fourier transform. If we multiply the spectrum of any message signal, then if we multiply the spectrum of message signal to cosine, then the spectrum will shift to the frequency of cosine signal and it will come from which equation? So this is mt cos omega ct. The Fourier transform of this is m of f minus fc plus m of f plus fc divided by 2. So from this property, this message signal gets shift to plus fc and minus fc and because we are drawing only the positive part, so we get spectrum shifted to plus fc which will look like this. This is fc plus fm because the origin is shifted to fc. So that means we are adding the fc in whole axis. So if we add this signal fc, if add the frequency fc, so 0 plus fc will be fc. So the peak value go into the fc. So it is in the fc and then this is fc plus fm and this is fc minus fm. This is our last term, sixth term. Now we can easily observe that because the input, because the input of this square law modulator is having frequency fm and the carrier frequency is fc. So the double sideband that should be generated at the output will be fc plus minus fm. Because the carrier frequency is fc, so the double sideband should be centered about fc. So that's why we get fc plus fm and fc minus fm. And we, sh uh, we should also get the carrier frequency that is fc because this is am signal which will have two sideband plus carrier so the carrier is having frequency fc so we should get the frequency at fc component at fc and fc plus minus fm if the input of this square law modulator is fc and fm then we should get the double sideband fc plus minus fm and carrier at fc so this is the desired term, we can see from this equation, uh, this plot that this is having the carrier frequency component fc and fc plus fm and fc minus fm which is our upper sideband and lower sideband and carrier. So to pass this signal only and suppress the other component, we required a band pass filter because this spectrum is center about fc. So the bandpass filter which we have written should have a specification that 
this bandpass filter should have center frequency fc and bandwidth 2 fm bandwidth 2 fm center frequency fc so we will place bandpass filter somewhere here this should be the response of bandpass filter and if the bandpass filter will have characteristics like this then it will suppress the other components like first fourth and third and fifth term. and we get the output as am signal so output of this bandpass filter will be s of t the second term and the sixth term second term is a1 ac cos omega ct a1 ac cos omega ct and the sixth term which is 2a2 ac mt cos omega ct so if it is an am signal then it should be represented uh, it should be represented in standard form so to convert this in standard form we should know the standard form of am and the standard form of am is ac 1 plus kmt cos omega ct so it should be converted into this form so to convert into this form we will take this a1 ac cos omega ct common and we get 1 plus 2a2 ac mt cos omega ct divided by we have taken this term common so this is a1 ac cos omega ct and we get cos omega ct or cos omega ct cancel and ac so we will get a1 into ac in bracket 1 plus 2a2 by a1 into mt cos omega ct so this is the standard form because we have get, uh, we have got this result and which is even uh, even ac 1 plus kmt cos omega ct so if we compare this equation the resultant equation with this equation we get the carrier amplitude at the output is a1 times ac so we can write here the new carrier amplitude become a1 times ac which is the constant of the nonlinear device and input to the square law modulator carrier amplitude which is input to the square law modulator and this k is 2a2 by a1 so we get this two result it is very important k equal to 2a2 by a1 if the characteristics will have standard form like this suppose you are solving any questions uh, of a square law modulator and the characteristics of that device is given in this form a1 vyt plus a2 vi square t that means only the linear term and the square term then you can directly use this result then you can directly consider the amplitude sensitivity of this modulator as 2a2 by a1 which is the coefficient of a square term and the coefficient of linear term multiplied by 2 so if the equation is given characteristics of the nonlinear device is given in this form now uh, in this way we have generated the am signal now we should uh, consider what should be the carrier frequency so that we can get the amplitude modulated signal at the output of this square law modulator without any distortion so for that uh, as we can see from the plot that if we are using bandpass filter here then it should pass only the second term and sixth term it should not pass other components it means that this lower side band which is fc minus fm should be far then this 2 fm because the bandpass filter is here starting from fc minus fm 
so it should pass the component from fc minus fm to fc plus fm only so this component this lower sideband frequency should always be greater than 2 fm so that it cannot pass through this band pass filter if this component pass through this uh, if this component 2 fm is greater than fc minus fm then it will also pass through this band pass filter and our original signal gets distorted so now we have to consider this fc minus fm should always be greater than 2 fm then only we can get the am signal without any distortion or without any disturbance so we can write the condition for carrier frequency we can write condition for carrier frequency to achieve am signal without distortion condition for carrier frequency to achieve am signal without any distortion this lower sideband fc minus fm should always be greater than or equal to equal to you can consider when the band pass filter is having ideal response else it should always be greater than 2 fm it means that the carrier frequency should always be greater than 3 fm so if you are using square law modulator then you should remember that whatever will be the message frequency you have to take the carrier frequency at least three times of message signal frequency to get am signal so this is the way uh, how we generate am signal and first method that is known as square law modulator so now next method will be switching modulator so next method is switching modulator so in switching modulator again we have uh, the two input signal which is our message signal and carrier signal which is input to this diode this time we are going to use the switching characteristics of diode in this particular method so uh, output of this diode is v naught t and which is input to the band pass filter as in case of square law modulator and it is having the characteristic center frequency fc and bandwidth 2 fm as we have seen in the previous method that why we required the center frequency fc and bandwidth 2 fm because the am signal which is centered to fc because the input of this a uh, carrier signal which is input to this device is fc that's why it should be centered to carrier frequency fc and the upper sideband which is fc plus fm and lower sideband fc minus fm if we assume the message signal frequency as fm now the vit which is input to this diode is if we apply kvl here if we apply kvl we get vi of t equal to this is plus mt plus ac cos omega ct minus vit that means minus vit and both are plus so minus vit plus mt plus ac cos omega ct it should be equal to 0 so we get vit equal to mt plus ac cos omega ct same as previous method we get the sum of carrier and message signal now it is input to the diode so how the diode works if we apply the positive voltage in the p side of diode the it is forward biased and if we apply the negative voltage in the p side of diode we get reverse bias and when the diode is forward biased in case of ideal diode it gets short circuited and when the diode is reverse biased it is open circuited in case of ideal diode so we are assuming ideal diode and diode when on it's when forward biased it is on and in this case it is short circuited and when diode is reverse biased it is off and it is open circuited this is the characteristics of ideal diode now the input to the diode is vit so according to the potential of vit this diode will work 
so the vit is sum of message signal and carrier signal we are assuming that the sum of message signal and carrier signal is in such a way that the carrier signal always dominates that means the carrier signal amplitude is always greater than the message signal amplitude at any instant of time because uh, we are we also know that the modulation index in case of am should always be less than 1 so we also know that the modulation index the modulation index this ma we write ac upon am so the carrier amplitude should always be greater than am that's uh, to get the sorry am upon ac the carrier amplitude should always be greater than am so that the modulation index will be less than fun according to this formula we know that it is inversely proportional to amplitude of carrier if we increase the amplitude of carrier we have solved any many questions like this also that uh, in which the carrier amplitude when we increase the modulation index gets decreased so uh, to maintain the modulation index less than 1 we require the carrier amplitude is higher than the message signal amplitude so we also assume here this vit is uh, having the potential according to this carrier signal that means the carrier signal dominates assuming carrier signal is dominating so the amplitude of vit or we can say the polarity of vit will be decided by polarity of carrier for example if if the message signal amplitude is 0 0.5 carrier amplitude is suppose 5 so we can write vit equal to mt which is 0 0.5 plus 5 which is equal to 5.5 .5. okay now if m of t is 0 0.2 and this is suppose minus uh, 2 then we also then also get minus 1.8 if suppose vit is 1 and it is minus 3 then also we get minus 2 then if we consider it is uh, minus 1 and it is plus 2 then also this is plus 1 so what you observe is the amplitude of message signal uh, the amplitude of carrier signal is always greater than amplitude of message signal this is 0.5 this is 5 this is minus uh, in terms of magnitude i am saying in terms of magnitude the amplitude of carrier signal is always greater than amplitude of message signal so according to the carrier signal the polarity is deciding if the carrier amplitude is positive then the polarity is positive if the carrier amplitude is negative like in this two case the result is negative the polarity of vit is negative if the carrier amplitude is positive polarity of vit is again positive so in this two case polarity of carrier signal is positive we are getting polarity of vit is positive we, in other two case we are having the amplitude of carrier as negative we are getting the polarity of vit is also negative it means that the polarity of input to the diode is deciding by carrier amplitude only by carrier signal only so according to the carrier the diode will work and the carrier is a sinusoidal signal and this sinusoidal signal will be having the positive polarity for half of the time period and for other half time period it will be having negative time negative amplitude it means that for positive half cycle of carrier the diode will be forward biased 
and for negative half cycle of carrier signal the diode will be reverse bias. So, in this way this diode will work. So, for positive half cycle of carrier VIT is positive and diode will be on and we get output V naught T when it gets short circuited when this diode gets short circuited like this this is short circuited then V i t and V naught t will be having same polarity. So, V naught t will be equal to V i t. This is the first equation which we are getting when the carrier is in forward bias, uh, carrier is in positive half cycle and diode is forward biased. For negative half cycle, negative half cycle of carrier. diode is reverse biased diode is reverse biased that means diode is off and when the diode is off it is open circuited when the diode is off it is open circuited so when it is open circuited so no current can flow from this path so, the no current will flow from this path. So, the current is 0 here that means the output is 0. So, we get V naught T equal to 0. This is our second equation. So, if we combine these two equation, we get the V, I, uh, v naught T which is output which is input to the band pass filter. So, somehow uh, because we are uh, we have explained the uh, uh, working of this switching modulator, but we have to generate AM signal and for that to generate AM signal we have mathematical, we should have mathematical expression like in the case of a square law modulator we proved that the resultant signal at the output of band pass filter is giving two side band and one carrier that is why we could have said that this uh, the switching square law modulator is generating an AM signal, but here uh, we have achieved this output signal V naught T which is input to the band pass filter, but at the output of this band pass filter we should get double side band with carrier. So, for that we have to combine these two equation into single equation and then we can write the uh, expression for V naught T and then we will pass it through the band pass filter and get output of that band pass filter. So, to combine these two equation as we can see that for the positive half cycle of carrier it is having V i t is having coefficient 1 and V naught t is 0. So, we can say that this V naught t can be written as P of t multiplied with V i of t. If we write like this it means that for positive half cycle of carrier this P i t should be having amplitude 1 to get the equation 1. And for the negative half cycle to get the value 0 this P of t should be 0. So, if this P of t is 0 irrespective of V i t the V naught t will be 0. So, in this way we can combine these two equation 1 and 2 into a single equation. It means that this P of t should be a periodic signal whose period should be equal to the period of carrier signal. The period of carrier signal is such a way that in the positive half cycle it is plus 1 and for the negative half cycle it is 0. So, we will consider this P of t So, this is a periodic signal whose time period should be matched with the time period of carrier. So, the time period of this is this is 0 and the time period is 
the time period of carrier which is TC. This is your periodic signal PT and this should be having amplitude 1. This is minus TC by 4 to TC by 4 and this is minus TC and somewhere here we get minus TC by 2 and TC by 2. This should be the signal because this signal here it is TC by 2 for half of the time period of carrier signal that is for positive half cycle for positive half cycle that means 0 to TC by 2. So, for TC by 2 it is plus 1 and for other TC by 2 it is 0 this amplitude is 0 and for this TC by 2 this amplitude is 1. For the, so, this is the positive half cycle of carrier when the amplitude is 1. So, we get this signal V i t if we multiply it with P t and for the other half cycle of carrier which is for other T c by 2 we have 0 amplitude. So, we will multiply it with 0 then we get V naught t equal to 0. So, in this way these two equation gets satisfied. So, this P t is a periodic signal we have to write the equation of V naught t and V naught t is having number of frequency component so that it will pass through the band pass filter and we can get the desired result. So, for that this P of t should be represented in terms of Fourier series because this is a periodic signal. So, if the P of t is a periodic signal with time period t c then it can be represented by trigonometric Fourier series and this trigonometric Fourier series can be written as A naught by 2 plus summation n equal to 1 to infinite A n cos n omega c t plus b n sin n omega c t. So, we have to calculate this value of a naught a n and b n uh, and uh, you have been studied uh, it into a signal sense system. So, we will calculate the value of a naught, a naught is 2 upon time period, time period is T c integration over the time period that is minus T c by 2 to T c by 2 this is the integration limit. Limit should be in such a way that one time period should be covered. So, this is the one time period minus T c by 2 to T c by 2 if we take the difference between these two we get one time period. So, integration limit should be in such a way that one time period should be completed. So, this is the one time period and the signal itself which is P t d t. This is the formula for A naught and we will substitute the value which is 2 upon T c and minus T c by 2 to T c by 2, but the signal from minus T c by 2 to T c by 4 is 0 and T c by 4 to T c by 2 is also 0. So, we will integrate it actually from minus T c by 4 to T c by 4 and minus T c by 4 to T c by 4 this P of t is having value 1. So, this is 1 and d t and if we solve this we get 1 because this shows that area under the pulse. So, area under this pulse is nothing but T c by 2. So, this T c by 2 and 2 by T c will get cancelled and we get 1 and now we will calculate the value of A n which is 2 upon T c integration from minus T c by 2 to T c by 2 this is the formula the signal itself and cos of n omega C t d t this is the formula. Now, we will substitute the values which is 2 upon T c minus T c by 4 to T c by 4 because in this region the value is 0. So, this is 1 now and cos n omega C t d t. So, if we integrate this we get a n 2 upon T c this is sin n omega C t upon n omega C limit from minus T c by 4 to T c by 4. So, omega c into T c what should be the value of this omega c into T c. So, this omega c equal to 2 pi f c and f c can be written as 1 upon T c. So, omega c into T c can be written as 2 pi. So, this is the value of omega c multiplied with T c. So, omega c multiplied with T c is 2 pi. So, we get 2 upon 2 n pi because n is already there and we substitute this upper limit n omega c T c by 4 
माइनस ऑफ साइन माइनस एन ओमेगा सी टी सी बाई फोर विच इज लोअर लिमिट Now this two and two will get cancelled one upon n pi. This omega c t c is again two pi. So we can write one upon n pi sine n bracket n into two pi by four. This minus and minus will be plus sine omega c into t c is two pi into n divided by four. So this is also two n pi by four. This is also two n pi by four. This will be Added and we can cancel two and this four and we finally get a n as two upon n pi sine. This will be cancelled, so this is sine n pi by two. This is the value of a n. This is the value of a n. Now we will substitute the value of a n and a naught. A naught is one. A n is this one. And what will be the value of b n? So because this PT is a symmetrical about the y-axis, that means it is an even signal. So if the signal is even, then the BN is zero. For even signal, BN is zero. So we have all the three values: A naught, AN, and BN. We will substitute the value of A naught and AN and BN in this equation. Then we get the value of PT. And after getting the value of PT, we will substitute into this equation, and we will get the V naught T. And from there, we will have number of frequency component, and we will pass it through the band pass filter, and we can achieve our desired signal. So the value of PT would be A naught by two. The value of A naught is one, and summation n equal to one to infinite a n. A n is two upon n pi. Sine n pi by two, and multiplied with cos n omega c t. So b n is zero. So this will be the value of p t. And if we expand this p t, we get one by two plus. If we substitute the value of n equal to one, the two pi two by upon pi is common. The two upon pi is common to all because this is constant. If we substitute the value of n equal to one, then we get sine pi by two. Sine pi by two is one. So we get cos Omega c t. If we substitute n equal to two, this is two pi by two. That is sine pi, and the integer multiple of pi of sine is always equal to zero. So this is zero. And for n equal to three, we get three here, one by three. And sine three pi by two is minus one, so we get minus one by three. So this is minus one by three, and n equal to three is cos three omega c t. So this is another value. For n equal to four, we get Sin 2 pi and sin 2 pi is again zero, so we get zero. And for n equal to five, we get one upon five cos five omega c t and so on. So we are getting alternate positive and negative terms and only the odd harmonics. Odd harmonics means the frequency is f c and the odd multiples of that frequency f c. So this is the signal which is Uh, denoted by p of t now we are having v not t which is multiplication of pt with vit vit is mt plus ac cos omega ct so this is our input message input signal vit and multiplied with pt and the pt is 1 by 2 plus 2 by pi cos omega ct minus 2 by 3 pi cos 3 omega ct And so on. We have multiplied this two by pi into cos omega c t, and so on. So now we will get the this m t will be multiplied with this whole term. This cos omega c t will be multiplied with this whole term, and we get number of frequency components. So if we multiply, we get m t by two first. We get two m t by pi, two by pi. Cos omega c t, we also get this two upon three pi term, and so on. Then we get plus a c cos omega c t multiplied with one by two. So a c cos omega c t multiplied with one by two. Then plus 
दिस टू अपॉन पाई टू अपॉन पाई ए सी कॉस स्क्वायर ओमेगा सी टी देन वी गेट माइनस टू अपॉन थ्री पाई ए सी कॉस ओमेगा सी टी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ कॉस थ्री ओमेगा सी टी एंड सो ऑन सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट टर्म्स विच वी विल गेट आफ्टर मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस टू सिग्नल so these are the number of terms which are input to the band pass filter so what are the frequency component present in this term so this is the empty by 2 so the the single term empty is present here so the message frequency is fm the message uh, frequency component is fm so this is our first term this is empty cos omega ct this is our second term and here we will get message signal multiplied with cosine signal then we get fc plus minus fm same as the previous method and so on that and in this second term second term we get this term ac cos omega ct which is having frequency fc which is our third term and here cos square omega ct so we get two components this cos square omega ct can be written as 1 plus cos 2 omega ct 2 cos square omega ct can be written in this form so it means that we get two frequency and first one is f equal to 0 that is this constant signal and here f equal to is 2 fc so two components we will get from this particular term cos square omega ct and here this is a cos a cos b formula of 2 cos a cos b which is cos a plus b so we get a plus b that means 4 fc so 4 fc means we get 4 fc and if we subtract this to cos a plus b is 4 omega c 4 omega c gives 4 fc term and uh, uh, difference between these two is 3 omega c minus fc that is 2 omega c so we get 2 fc term so here again we get the two frequency component which is 2 fc and 4 fc and similarly we get many other frequency component also but we we are only interested in the term which is center about fc and should have the two side band fc plus fm and fc minus fm so if we draw the spectrum of this particular term v not t which is v not f same as in case of square law modulator if we draw the first term we get see here if we draw the first term the spectrum of message signal is considered as fm so this is fm this is our first term this is our second term which should have the center frequency fc and multiplied with empty so we will get fc plus minus fm so this is fc plus fm fc minus fm this is our second term this is our third term ac cos omega ct so ac cos omega ct that means the impulse at fc so we have impulse at fc this is our third term impulse at fc so the frequency component is present at fc the signal is present at fc and from this term we get two frequency component at 0 at 2 fc so zero somewhere here this is our fourth term and at 2 fc somewhere here this is our fifth term this is fourth term and fifth term this term is giving fourth and fifth term and the last term is having frequency 2 fc and 4 fc so 2 fc it means its strength will be increased and uh, this is nothing but the fourth term and the fifth term and the sixth term and another frequency is at 4 fc somewhere far away from the original spectrum of 4 fc we should not require to draw this term this two particular term we can ignore this two term because uh, it is center at 2 fc and 4 fc and uh, we have the band pass filter which is centered at fc so we can ignore this term so we uh, we need not uh, to draw this particular term now we are having the band pass filter the band pass filter is centered at fc and having bandwidth 2 fm so this is the response of our band pass filter
it is centered at fc and it is having bandwidth 2 fm so in this way we can generate an am signal so the output of bandpass filter would be output of bandpass filter would be second and third term so second term is this 2 by mt uh, 2 mt by pi cos omega ct and this third term so the output which is denoted by s of t is 2 mt cos omega ct by pi plus third term ac cos omega ct ac cos omega ct by 2 if I take AC cos omega CT by 2 common, then we get this AC cos omega CT by 2 common, then we get 1 plus because we have to represent it into a standard form which is in terms of 1 plus K empty. So, that is why 1 plus form uh, we are using. So, this is 1 plus we are taking this 2 common. So, we get uh, 4 here 4 by pi and AC is also common. So, we should be dividing it by AC and this is MT. So, if we multiply this to uh, AC cos omega CT by 2, we get this term and if we multiply with this, uh, we get 2 MT cos omega CT, 2 MT cos omega CT by pi AC and AC will get cancelled. So, if we take this common, we get into the standard form. This is the standard form this is the standard form. So, you can compare with the standard form which is AC 1 plus K M T cos omega C T. So, after comparing the new carrier amplitude, new carrier amplitude is AC by 2 and K is 4 by pi AC. So, this is the value of new carrier amplitude at the output and the amplitude sensitivity of modulator 4 by pi k AC. Now, again uh, we have to check that what should be the condition for carrier frequency. So, what should be the condition for carrier frequency? Uh, it can be derived that the lower sideband frequency should be always greater than the message signal frequency. So, condition for carrier frequency is without distortion to get the AM signal without distortion we should take FC minus FM always greater than FM. It means that the carrier frequency should be greater than equal to in worst case 2 FM. So, the carrier frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 FM. So, whenever we are using switching modulator, we should remember that if the message signal frequency is FM, then we have to keep carrier frequency at least twice of message signal frequency. So, this is all about the switching modulator. So, in this way we have generated the AM signal, there are two methods square law modulator and switching modulator. Now, we have to consider uh, or we have to demodulate the signal. From this AM signal, we have to recover our message signal. If you have generated AM signal, you are transmitting it through by antenna and when you are receiving it, so uh, after receiving this AM signal, we have to recover our message signal back because we want to transmit the message signal not modulated signal. So, we have to recover our original message signal back from the modulated signal. So, the next part will be the demodulation of AM.